Well, we got a mixed handover from Wall Street and uh, right now that is the case with the Asian markets as well. Consumer price inflation for the month of April coming in at an 11-month low of 4.83%. Yesterday's low for the Nifty Bank is uh, 48,893 and that I mean, is a level which we should not revisit. And the first rates will come up on your screen. Let's look at the Nifty. Uh, we are starting at 22,100 plus. So some more industry and commercial are expected to come in. So that is the area where we think uh, demand will pick up. So we have seen a huge spurt in the contribution of rail metro vertical to the top line. It has forecasted a three-fold increase in HAL's order book and 25% revenue growth is what they are factoring in. Uh, the capital adequacy of SFL uh, will uh, improve by nearing to 100 basis points. It's a quiet Tuesday morning so far. Mankind Pharma is considering Advent International's stake that is in Bharat Serum vaccine to be purchased. Our fuel and power, of course, has moved from deflation territory to inflation territory 1.4. Those are visuals coming in from the DM office where Prime Minister Narendra Modi is uh, filing his nomination papers in Varanasi. The rescue operations go on. Uh, the surge operations are almost over. Across the indices, there's some green, but look at the outperformance by the mid-cap. Finally, we have some green on the screen and it's more than 100 points, it's nearly 200 points and uh, it's sustaining, it's holding and hopefully it'll hold for the next one hour or so. This is closing bell, last hour of trade coming up. We are coming to you from the CNBC TV 18, Moti Rosefa Studios, I'm Prashant, with me my colleagues Rima Surbi here and Nigel is joining in from the newsroom for guys. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good Hi, afternoon. Uh, I guess Prashant, I, I, I heard uh, Prashant's last line, right? Hopefully it will hold for the next one hour or so. Maybe one thing that's working for the market this time is that quite a few heavy hitters are participating in this, this move. Uh, so maybe we will indeed get that green on the screen by close. Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, 158, right? 160 points. And I think it should uh, hold. Uh, it's not been skittish. It's not kind of been uh, up and down. It's been steady. Uh, and uh, this is... Sort of good news. So hope, and we were sort of talking about this in the morning. Hopefully, the market kind of flattens. I mean, stops falling first of all, stabilizes, and then you start to see a little bit of rebound. Uh, nothing very large expected in any case, because it's, uh, uh, you know, this is of course everyone has got their eyes to the first week of June with the election results, etc. But uh, you know that five, five and a half percent pullback. Hopefully, let's see uh, if that is behind us. Now, uh, just a couple of points here, and you know. Uh, how will we know if this is completely now sort of behind us? Then price action will have to tell us that. Uh, for the Nifty, <clears throat> that means that it needs to first cross over the 40-day 40 40-day moving average, uh, which is the uh, this is the exponential average of this uh, simple 22,272, and then the 20-day simple moving average is at 22,335. I mean, we're 20 points away on the, from the first level, and a little bit above that, you get to the 20-day moving average. So. You know, you get back above that and then we kind of get, uh, I guess, you know, you get a bit more comfort uh, that you're above uh, sort of critical, at least near to medium term support levels. Uh, and, uh, resistance levels, beg your pardon. Advanced decline is uh, 4 is to 1 in favor of advances. And that's quite uh, heartening to see. Bank Nifty is higher as well, but it is underperforming if you sort of uh, put it against what the Nifty is doing. Quarter percent of the Nifty bank. A bank uh, the Nifty, of course, is up about almost three quarters of a percent uh, as we begin this uh, edition of closing. Uh, closing bell. Prima, hi. Hi. Uh, <coughs> bank Nifty is underperforming because ICICI Bank, Axis Bank are actually in the red. They're down <coughs> close to about half a percent. And even on HDFC Bank, the gains are not that much. You know, HDFC Bank is just up close to about 0.4 percent. But a solid showing by the mid cap index, the broader markets, the mid cap index is up uh, close to about 1 percent. In terms of the heavy hitters that, you know, Surbhi was alluding to, Reliance Industries is a big one today. So Reliance Industries is up 1.5 percent. The other one is LNT that's up close to about 2.5 percent. And sectorally, metals, autos, and the CPSC. That's where you are seeing a lot of the gains. The metal index is now up 3 percent. The auto index has moved up to a, you know, close to about a 2 percent rally. And PSUs too, whether it's defense, railways, shipbuilding stocks, a lot of buying interest is visible today. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, just to name a couple of them, if we're talking about railway PSUs, that moves happened after uh, quite a bit of a gap. And today, all of them are on fire, as was always the case, uh, you know, till just a few weeks ago. Railtel, 9%, Aircon, 7.5%, IRFC, 7.5%, RVNL, 6.5%. So it's a big, big railway move. 
that's uh, playing out again. But even beyond, I mean, look at say metal stocks anyway, as Rima pointed out there anyway, I mean, as a sector, metals are doing well, even on the private sector side, the larger stocks. Uh, but uh, on the PSU screen, check out a uh, sale, for instance, which is having a very, very good afternoon. Nalco is up about 6 7% as well. Uh, that's Vedanta, like I was saying. That you know, Vedanta, anyway, they're, you know, they're looking at fundraising, so there are other corporate events that are lined up as well. But anyway, metals, uh, very strong pocket. PSU is another very strong pocket. And beyond this, just to uh, name a couple of interesting stocks, <clears throat> look at something like a Bharat Dynamics, uh, look at something like a Cochin Shipyard. I mean, all of these. Uh, and by the way, on the MNC screen, BASF is catching my eye. BASF is up about 11-12%. Uh, so yesterday it was uh, all about ABB. Today it's a BASF, uh, another MNC stock that's really hitting the limelight this afternoon. So plenty to keep us busy, Nigel. I mean, the mid-cap screen absolutely on fire. Well, that's right. You know, and uh, because of that MSCI meeting overnight, I think HDFC Bank could be a, a mover in the final hour of uh, trade as well. So we'll keep an eye out on that one. For the time being, it's recovered a little bit from the low point of the day. And also we have the Nifty Financial Services Index that will play out the weekly expiry. So banks, particularly HDFC Bank and the Financial Services Index, will keep an eye out on both those two. How do you trade from here on, though? Mitesh joins us to help us out uh, with the trade on the index. Well, Mitesh, you're not really convinced with regard to this up move, I think so. Uh, at what uh, level would you think that the market is turning? For the time being, I think you'll be using the opportunity shot. Is that correct? No. All right. Okay. So what is so the, the idea? Was yeah, yeah, the idea was that twenty-two two hundred was the level to watch on the upside. Okay. And uh, you know, uh, during the day we were hovering around that, but not showing any signs of weakness. So in fact, we didn't short. Uh, but you know, when the uh, market did manage to cross twenty-two two hundred two hundred ten on this spot, we went. We had some minor long puts, so not very really aggressively long. But I think this is a market which is, you know, very clearly at least uh, taken care of the negative sentiments by staying about 20 to 200. So for me, now I think, you know, the turning point is 20 to 100. So you have a 100 point stop if you want to go long on the Nifty. The targets are closer to about 20 to 500. So there's still about uh, 250 odd points left uh, on the upside. So I think, you know, uh, as I said, we're not looking at a big upside. We're not looking at a very aggressive move on the upside. But I think this could drift up given the fact that the negative sentiments are kind of taken care of and the hourly and the two hourly charts have managed to look up. So in that sense, I think, you know, don't be short in case, uh, because early in, the, uh, early in the day and for the last couple of days, my view was that we'll try and short around 20 to 200, which uh, we didn't do because there was no uh, weakness when the market was around those levels. So if anybody has it, I think exit and maybe, you know, uh, around 20 to 200, 220 zones, try to take a long with the 100 point kind of a stop. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, Mitesh, uh, uh, we leave it there for now. Uh, more... Uh... Uh, with you in just a bit from now. PBR Inox uh, reported numbers early on uh, for the fourth quarter and for the full year number uh, as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, the numbers uh, seem uh, much better, of course, as compared to the previous year. Revenues have uh, gone up about 11% year on year uh, to about 1,290 crores. That's, of course, for the quarter. Uh, we are now joined by Mr. Ajay Bijli, Managing Director of uh, the company. Uh, we'll also have the CFO join us in just a bit uh, Ajay, good afternoon. Good to have you back uh, with us here on CMC TV 18. Prashant, this side, we spoke to you just a few uh, days back. And at that point, of course, you could not talk about the quarterly results or anything financial. So let's start there. Uh, so you've, uh, you know, you posted a, you're in the black in 24. Uh, will this continue? I mean, you know, uh, would you, would you, how is, how is F5 25 looking? If you can guide the market and us as well uh, for what, what trends uh, we should expect. Well, what I'm happy about is that uh, two years uh, it's been since COVID, uh, things are only improving. We had 140 million people who came to us last year. And this year uh, we got 150 million people. So that's good. Occupancies have gone up slightly, uh, but uh, our revenues are up by 17%. I'm talking about the full year. And uh, also our EBITDA, we've st still uh, come out with 809 crores of EBITDA. So things are only going uh, better, I think, uh, the three uh, fraternities which, you know, define our business. Uh, one is the film fraternity, then the real estate uh, developers. We're joined at the hip with all shopping centers and malls. And the third is really the consumer. They're all, you know, sort of, uh, you know, getting their act together after uh, being shut for so long. And uh, so slowly it's all inching towards uh, uh, positivity. So, I mean, the outlook every year, you know, these are movies which are on paper. But currently, at least, I'm excited about some of the South uh, films which are coming. Uh, Pushpa 2 is coming. Kalki is coming. Indian 2 is coming. Uh, some big films are coming. Uh, in India, in Hindi films, uh, the genre which is doing exceedingly well just now is, uh, with the youngsters at least, is these 
little jumpy movies and little scary movies. Uh, hopefully, the numbers won't be scary. Uh, so, the three two is coming. Bhul Bhulaiya two is coming. Amir Khan is coming after a long time with uh, a movie in December. A big movie of uh, uh, Amir and Sunny Deol coming together is coming called uh, uh, Lahore Forty Seven. Uh, then you got Baby John, which is a South Indian. another atli movie with varun dhawan so at least the lineup uh, 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 which is the film film part of the whole thing is uh, looking promising and as i said consumer is also now given its verdict then uh, who, that they want to go out and entertain themselves which is the reason why we've got 151 million people who came to our cinemas last year mm. um gentlemen afternoon this is reema here uh nitin um your average ticket price has declined in q4 so what led to that and you've typically said in the past that the company takes an annual price hike of 4 to 6% is that on the cards and if yes when and particularly about footfalls and occupancy in the near term in the quarter that we are in uh given ipl is going on um should we expect a drop in footfall occupancy what has it been so far in the quarter that we are in sure you know our ticket price is directly a function of what films we are getting uh, during the course of uh, the quarter uh, in q4 you know you would have noticed our footfalls were slightly lower than uh, how the q2 and q3 played out uh, so because they were not very big films you know our, our, our average ticket price growth was you know negative uh, during the quarter uh, we still maintain our guidance to uh, you know get to inflation led growth 3 to 4% but you know during the course of uh, last financial year we had ticket price growth of almost 10% because of the merger synergies that the way they have played out i think this year a uh, ticket price growth is going to be slightly lower uh, we are completely focused on you know getting more people to cinemas including you know launching initiatives like passport which is uh, you know a subscription service where at 349 rupees a month you can watch four films during the weekdays uh, so we'll be launching more of that and you know we are going to look at uh, a lower ticket price growth this year but the focus will be to drive more admissions hmm. second and what about so nitin <laughs> yeah. yeah go ahead on occupancy and footfalls given that ipl season is on yeah i think quarter 1 is going to be a slower quarter because a lot of film releases have got pushed out uh, uh, not just because of ipl but because of the elections uh, because uh, you have to close down Uh, in most of the markets during the course of elections so i think april and may are quite slow months we expect you know film releases to pick up starting mid june onwards and hopefully q2 and q3 will be great quarters where all the big films are lined up for release but q1 will be a slow quarter you know given what we've seen in the first uh, 40 45 days of uh, this quarter Nitin, uh, hi afternoon. So, uh, give us a slightly you know longer horizon view because this is also the, you know the first interview as uh, you know we're talking to in FI twenty five. Now, a lot of things are happening. I mean, there's a premiumization, and we remember our conversation with Ajay just a, a few days ago, where your premium screens are fifteen percent gradually. I think the plan is to take them to twenty percent. That's that's one aspect. Then the way you are sort of moving with the average ticket price. uh you know coupled with the way the trends you're observing on the fnb side so all things put together you closed fi24 i think at an ebitda margin of around 13% now That's that right. the business is back sustained you know run rate for ebitda margins what should shareholders expect i'm talking about yearly ebitda margins yes yeah, see ultimately as the business matures and stabilizes we want to get back to 20% kind of ebitda margins for sure Uh, a, a part of it is also a function of how the content lineup flows out you know during the course of the year but if you look at our investor presentation we have done a lot of work on the cost side and you know we are waiting for you know a box office to start performing a slightly better because our advertising revenue you know uptake is going to play out in the next 12 15 months as the box office picks up so we expect to go back uh, to 20% ebitda margins in a uh, mid term it's uh, very difficult to say whether it will happen this year uh, but we definitely in the 12 to 24 month horizon that's the aim that we want to get back to pre covid level of our beta margins four months uh, is the target for that 20% margin is the, is that the right way to look at it that that's the right way to look at it. Yeah. got it got mm. it and and uh, nitin that uh, in your in your investor presentation there is this fascinating uh, sort of table f520 to f524 what how of costs moved right yeah. and uh, you've seen or you've kind of uh, that you looked at the for each of the items rent and manpower costs and utilities 
how you've, I mean, so the, for, to increase margins from here, it, I'm assuming this is that you, you've squeezed out everything you can, right? Or, 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 or could, or could, could uh, help could come from the cost front as well. That's still possible. I think the big cost now we are focusing on is the occupancy cost, which is the rent and uh, cam that we pay in shopping centers. Whatever was directly within company's control, you would notice that we've done a lot to squeeze out, you know, cost savings during the last three to four years. Uh, but we are also working equally hard to drive up revenues uh, because getting more people to cinemas, uh, you know, through various pricing initiatives, as well as a lot of promotional initiatives remains the you know, key target of the business. Mm. Uh, so you'll also have plans to liquidate uh, your real estate assets and you're sitting on prime real estate, whether it's in Mumbai, Pune, Vadodara. And I think it's valued at about 300 to 400 crore. So first correct that. And uh, if, you know, that's the right number, the valuation of your real estate. And what's your, you know, debt deleveraging plan? How much will you pare down in FI25? How much in FI26? Yeah, so uh, I think the plan is, if you look at even in a volatile year that we had, we had almost 100 crores of free cash flow that we generated from the business. And all of that has gone down to pay down debt. Uh, during the next 12 months, whatever will be the free cash flow that will get generated out of the business will be used uh, after CapEx to fully prepay the debt. And, you know, we're in the process of uh, figuring out the monetization of real estate assets. We are in that phase where we're evaluating the sale. And uh, all the money relies from, you know, uh, uh, monetization of that assets will be used to pay down debt. Our, you know, our focus will be, you know, to reduce our leverage uh, down by at least 50% over the next 12 to 15 months period. Okay. All right. So looking at uh, reducing leverage. Uh, Ajay, finally, I've been a little short on time, but we want to sort of end with a couple of uh, strategy notes from you for the year ahead. Uh, one, Prashant was just pointing out, I think, from your presentation that you've tied up with the Devyani International uh, for, you know, certain F&B initiatives that you're looking at. So just explain that rationale. And also, I believe that a large chunk of the new screen editions are going to be happening in the south. So why the, the stress in the southern markets and just, you know, larger strategy to grow the business uh, as this year rolls out? Which is a couple of things. One is uh, Devyani, definitely, because all our F&B sales just now are post-ticketed. And we believe FNB is a very important driver for our business. And uh, again, not putting all your eggs in one basket. Some pre-ticketed uh, FNB income is something that we are, we've been very uh, focused on. And we had either the uh, choice to do it ourselves or tie up with somebody like Devyani. We already have a relationship with them because of our uh, Pepsi association for a very long time and Costa Coffee relationship with them as well. And uh, lots of uh, malls have got these, uh, so to speak, unorganized food courts, which are not branded. And we believe that if we tie up with Devyani, Devyani already has a focus on food courts. But a lot of shopping centers offer this opportunity. And we can get more uh, share of the consumer's wallet. 150 million people, as I said, come to our cinemas anyway. And we believe that's a good pivot for the company to do, rather than just focusing on FNB, uh, which is post-ticketed. Uh, that's one. Uh, second, South Market always has fascinated us more because the content uh, supply and demand is much more robust over there. You have Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and English Hindi uh, films which get consumed. And plus the movie going index of uh, Southern customers is much more than uh, North, East, West and South. Uh, but the, the, th the fourth strategic uh, uh, sorry, pivot that we are taking is that our capital intensity is going to be lesser this year. We are going to be, uh, we have a lot of deals in place where the developer is going to be contributing uh, into uh, an asset light model for us. A lot of retail companies have moved into that and we believe the brand is established now uh, to, to move into that zone, which hotel companies do. And as I said, certain retail companies recently have started doing that. Either a FOCO model, which is franchise-owned company uh, operated, or pure um, a, a very asset light model, where bulk of the uh, you know capex is done by the uh, by the developer. So we are being very very choosy about how we grow, uh, you know, because we've already got a base of 1744 screens. So everything that we add now has to be value creative. It has to be asset right. Mm. 
All right, gentlemen, thanks a lot, Ajay, as well as Nitin, for joining in and giving us all those details. We wish you all well for the remainder of uh, the coming fiscal and just a request, go a little easy on the price hikes, you know. <laughs> Old timers like me love to visit, uh, you know, the cinema halls and enjoy a movie. All the best, we catch up thanks. in the coming quarter as well. Thank you. All right, well, uh, time to get back to the markets then. The Nifty is actually struggling to hold on to those gains. You know, the Nifty Bank as well now is up only around 50 points. At one point of time, it was up more than 150 points. So at higher levels, we're seeing some bit of nervousness that's creep creeping in. But let's tell you about the sector of the day. That's the metal index. That's flying away in today's trading session. What's working for it? Well, the street is a little bit optimistic that the Fed will start cutting uh, rates. We also have the inflation data points. So that could give some direction in that front. And normally ahead of big inflation uh, data coming out of the United States, you would see the metal index uh, move up a little bit. But there's some stock-specific action as well that's helping uh, some of these metal names. So let's focus on JSPL first. Came out of the set of numbers overnight, and it looked very good. They bit up a ton, was better by close to 300 rupees in, uh, in comparison to what we were working with. And that was because volumes were better as well. Close to around, uh, you know, two, two point, uh, more than 2 million tons is what they delivered. We were working with a number of around 1.9 million tons. Also. So some part of the operating leverage did play out, and that's why the absolute EBITDA was better than what uh, we expected. Now, quarter four is good, but quarter one could be even better. Why? Because price increases have come about. The management has said the cooking coal cost will come down by 30 to $40 per tonne. They're also talking about using more higher amount of their captive coal, which will help them. And finally, you know, earlier they were selling semis. Close to 1.4 million tonnes of semis is what they sold in FY24. Well, in the coming year, some of those semis will get converted into final steel or value-added steel, and that's where they'll fetch better realization. So put all this together, some part of the street is quite bullish uh, on the stock, namely in Nuvama. They have gone ahead, they've increased their target price out there. They've increased their multiple itself. Earlier, they were giving it six times EV per bitter, now they're giving it seven times. And they're expecting their beta per ton to go to around 16,700 rupees in FI26, and the ROCE improving to around 21%. So that explains why JSPL is up, it's reacting to numbers. Vedanta. On May 16th, they're going to be having a board meeting and they're going to be looking at raising some equity. It could be an FPO, rights issue, some kind of equity raise is what they're talking about. And also they're saying that they're going to be looking at a dividend payout for the first time in this fiscal. So that's why the street is quite excited on Vedanta. And besides that, they're saying the reserves on the oil and gas division has gone up by 19%. So that explains why Vedanta is up. Hindustan Zinc, that's recovered big time from the low point of the day. We know that zinc prices are firm, silver prices are up, and even lead prices have moved up. But now an additional kicker came in earlier today. Uh, you know, they have been announced as they have technically qualified as a bidder for two gold mines in Rajasthan. And both those mine names should come up for you on the screen. So maybe a new avenue is what they're looking at. So the street likes that. It's still a little bit lower, but it's recovered a goodish bit from the low point. And finally, Hindalco, their subsidiary novelist is moving in that direction where they're going to be listing on the NYSE. Further details are awaited. But this is the stock specific action that's playing out. I think ahead of that inflation data, that, you know, the street is anticipating that maybe rate cuts could come about and we start moving in that direction and that could be an additional trigger of why the metal index itself is moving up. Let's get a view on the index then. Dipan Mehta joins us, Director of Alexa Equities. Hi Dipan, uh, it's a sector that you've not been very, very fond of, but what's your view? You know, you have the fairest and non-fairest names, they're off to the races. Do you like any of these names? Yeah, good morning, Nacho. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me at every time <laughs> about, about my... Uh, <laughs> Reference for steel companies is just uh, baggage, you may say, because never really made too much money on steel companies because of the volatility in earnings. But yes, you have to hand it that JSPL came out with a very good set of numbers, um, largely because of lower raw material costs. But if you look at the volume growth, it was flat, completely flat. So that's a bit of a red flag, according to me. And sure, I think steel companies have done well. There is a better price discipline amongst them. Threat from imports has reduced uh, mildly. And street is paying higher and higher P multiples. So I haven't seen P multiples, price to book multiples as high as they have been for the steel sector. But coming back to commodities, I think, uh, you know, look at the way prices of copper, aluminium, and zinc have moved up. And clearly, I think Vedanta is in a very sweet spot uh, because it has got all of these three uh, metals within it. And, uh, you know, the entire demerger process which they are trying to do will eventually lead to a lot of deleveraging at the parent level, which has always been a cloud as far as Vedanta is concerned. And it's an aggressive management. They are interested in expanding capacities and right-sizing their business. Uh, it's a global business as well. And I think they are seeing a cyclical upswing. So I would say that's one of the top picks within the uh, non-ferrous uh, metal space for the commodity uh, kind of a group per se. Stay on, Dipan, need to get into a break. On the other side, we'll also invite Vikas Kemani, founder at Carnelian Asset Management Advisor. Stay tuned.
Welcome back here with us on Closing Bell and it continues to be a pretty strong afternoon of trade. Let's uh, actually look at some more uh, uh, developments in you know, market stories right now. Uh, the general insurance business data for April is out. Let's go across to Yash to understand the trends. Yash, how's it looking? Well, Surabhi, it's looking like a good month uh, as far as April is concerned for general insurance companies. Three key headlines coming out of the month of April. The first one is that ICICI Lombard has uh, managed to perform uh, really well and that too on a strong base that it was working on from April 2023. Star Health Insurance uh, this time around has shown strong performance. Uh, it has managed to close the premium gap when it's compared with industry average. And third one, New India Assurance has lagged uh, in its performance in the month of April despite having a favourable base. I'll start with ICICI Lombard. The April premium has grown at 23%. Remember, it was working on a decent base of uh, a growth of about 17%. Uh, April 2024, year on year, the market share has grown by about 63 basis points for ICICI Lombard. New India Assurance, as I said, weak performance. The company has grown its premium by about 4% in the month of April. It was working on a favourable base uh, of about 10% growth last year, same month. The market share, importantly, for New India Assurance uh, in the month of April on a year-on-year -year basis has dropped by 200 basis points. So that's a, a negative for the company. Go Digit Insurance, the IPO opens tomorrow. I've decided to include that in this particular list. April premium growing at 8%. April market share down by 22 basis points. Now, importantly, Star Health Insurance, the company has performed well in the month of April. It was growing at a strong base of 25% growth last year, same month. Uh, despite that, it's managed to grow at 23 now, generally, Star would have a, a gap of about 10% when it comes to standalone health insurance industry average growth. That has reduced to just about 4% in the month of April 2024. Market share amongst all general insurance companies is up about 21 basis points for Star Health. Amongst uh, standalone health insurance companies, it's down by about 116 basis points. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, Dipan is still with us on the show. Uh, Dipan, uh, Arti Pharma, it's a very small company, uh, but the, you know, the stock is up 20% reacting to numbers. Have you looked at it? Uh, sorry, Arti Mahal passed that company. Uh, I haven't really okay. looked at the numbers um, per se. So. What about uh, the reaction we're seeing on Cochin Shipyard with the European order boost? What have you made of that? Well, see, I think uh, order book position for shipyards like Ocean is not an issue. It's just execution and how quickly they can deliver and how much of the revenue they can book and what kind of capacity they still have available for new orders. And in a way, I think earning visibility is uh, drawing a lot of investors to the counter. And uh, we are seeing a sharp increase in expansion of the P multiple. Not so much about the earning, but the P multiple really is expanded for a uh, shipbuilder like Ocean Shipyard. I think if you're looking for a safe kind of investment with good earning visibility for the next several years, then all the shipyards, including Garden Reach, Cochin uh, Shipyard, uh, all of them, I think, have got uh, a great future from that point of view. All right. Uh, uh, Deepan, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, that. Appreciate you joining in and a great conversation uh, as always. 140 points on the Nifty is where we are at, 22,240 uh, on the index. Vikas Khiman is with us, founder at Carly, uh, Carnelian Asset Management and Advisors. Uh, Vikas, uh, welcome back on the program. Thanks very much for your time. Vikas, uh, 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 the market's been uh, sort of, you know, a little jittery, a little skittish, a little nervous, five, five and a half percent kind of pullback from the all-time highs, uh, from that Friday's high. Uh, but today it's a much better looking screen. What's the dominating driver, Vikas, to your mind right now uh, for the market? I'm talking about here and now. Uh, to begin, and then we can kind of sort of stretch out the timelines to the more medium term. Go on. I think, Prashant, in the recent past, there's been a lot of uh, narrative getting built that, you know, BJP might not get decent majority and there might be some compromise on that. And I guess that probably made market nervous. In fact, that, you know, market is expecting or was expecting, uh, you know, continuity of the current government with a decent majority. So probably that, that those kind of, uh, you know, narrative building could have, you know, led to this kind of correction. Uh, but I do believe that you know, uh, uh, there's a very strong probability, I would say, you know, uh, uh, for for current government to come back with 350 plus. And, you know, and if that were to happen, this correction is a good opportunity to to kind of bite in or nibble in or increase your exposure. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of quite optimist or, you know, positive about the markets. Uh, because, um, you know, afternoon, 
Now, you've been bullish about the manufacturing theme way back in August of 2020. And ever since then, in every interaction, you've only reiterated that, reiterated that and you believe all the stars are aligned. You know, the question is that even in any upcycle, usually in one or two years, most of the re-rating takes place. And after that, stocks end up becoming, you know, market performers or we don't, you know, end up seeing the kind of multi-bagger returns that you see in the first few years. Has that happened with manufacturing? and any of the stocks? So, I mean, as you rightly said, that there will be periods of accelerated return and there's a period going to be ex uh, periods of stable returns. And we have seen in many sectors in the past as well. IT was one such example, you know, till 2000, and then after that we saw a stable return. But after 2000, also IT has given a great return, quote, whatever 2001 debacle. So anytime a trend, trend builds, you know, there will be accelerated return and there's a stable return. But mind you, the stable return itself is not bad, right? You yeah. know. So I do believe that while manufacturing has made significant return in the last three, four years, because the early pickings have gone away, but still the growth of the sector is here to stay. To give an idea, today, total manufacturing GDP of India is only 0.5, 0.6 trillion dollars. This number, by the time Amrit Kaal ends, will become 8 trillion dollars, 16 times uh, of the current GDP. If this kind of you know, growth happens, it is very natural that many companies will become 20, 30, 40 times. Uh, you know, many sectors will do much better. So it is our job to identify those companies segments. So money will be made. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, of course, you know, same companies may continue to compound. New companies might come. So that's a very different uh, sort of. But I wouldn't say that manufacturing as a as a theme is kind of uh, you know over or it's, it's a long legs. And also, I will tell you, within the long journey, also there will be periods of correction. Like till 2021 or early 22, chemicals was doing very well. And then we saw entire 22, later part of 22 and 23 uh, chemicals kind of uh, correcting. But now again, we're beginning to pick up. So, you know, all those things, intermittent cycles will come about. But if I take a longer term picture, I think it's going to create one of the very large uh, wealth for, for, for Indian, Indian investors. All right. Uh, hi, Vikas. Good afternoon. Nigel on this side. First of all, you know, I really enjoyed uh, the chat that you had with regard to the risk that you take in life as well as in markets and how things pay off. If you try only then, uh, you know, you can enjoy uh, the benefits as well. So good on you and good to see that it's been quite successful for you as well. But talking about the markets, uh, you know, I wanted to understand how do you approach the pharma theme as well? At the start of this year, actually, you were in minority because you said the pharma index, it's going through, I think, six, seven years of uh, a cycle where it didn't move at all. But year to date, at least, it's been the big outperformer. The Nifty, I think, is up 2%. The Pharma Index is up close to 13%. Your, your view on this theme? I think, Nigel, like, I continue to believe that Pharma is a very big theme from here as well. I continue to believe that Pharma is a big theme from here. Over the next, uh, you know, five, six years, you will see. Because for a good six, seven years, Stock didn't do, uh, sector didn't do at all very well. U.S. markets were in a difficult uh, time. I think U.S. pricing has improved. Domestic markets are growing with the with the government's focus on providing healthcare to all. Uh, with the with the you know Arugya Bharat, you know the consumption of the medic medicine has gone up. So and also with the China plus one playing out, you know you have APIs playing coming about, CDMO coming about. So the sector is evolving. Sector is becoming bigger. So I think you know it is here to stay and it is here to stay for a very long period of time. Uh, so so you know I continue to remain very positive on the theme uh, uh, right from the time when we spoke about uh, you know uh, you know uh, last late last year or earlier this year. But I I think it's a long long journey. Mm. Because uh, one of the names you like in that space is Loris. Uh, it's uh, you know there is potential and it's just that when is it going to emerge and uh, burst out right? Uh, because uh, quarterly disappointments are uh, have become kind of routine, but things change, and uh, you know you're betting on that change. How close are we to that turn, in your opinion? Again, I will tell you, Prashant. You know, every this is CDM was a sector. That, you know, the segment you have to understand. It's a very, very uh, you know a tricky segment. You need to make investments ahead of the demand, and once you you need to showcase the capability. You need to showcase that, that you have a capacity, and then customers come audit. You know, they work programs together. So, you know, it is always very okay to have two, three quarters of here and there in terms of, you know, from time you start to kind of deliver, uh, you know. So I think the company has good part that has is transitioning or has transitioned from pure API place to CDMO place. And, you know, uh, so it, it, this kind of transition, by the way, is not easy. And, you know, at least what's 
it speaks volumes about the capability of the management and credibility of the management in the eyes of customers that company can transition from a so-called commoditized you know arv api business to a cdmo player but this transition sometimes takes longer than market expect markets we are very impatient people we all want quick results but uh, that's where i think your patience gets tested out i would say look at newland same thing had happened in the newland's case market you know hypothesized they will deliver and then there was a disappointment of two quarters stock went down to 1000 bucks today we are sitting at 6 7000 rupees right so one or two quarters of good number good few contracts coming can change the fortune of the country uh, of the company so i think what i believe is that cdmo is a very big space there are only very few players who are well positioned in this uh, segment so i think you know it's it's but again i mean my horizons are 3 to 5 years so i am happy to uh, put up with no performance for a very long period of time mm, okay finally uh, hi good afternoon uh, vikas to be here so you know just wanted to end with uh, your thoughts on some of the new age businesses and some of them have come out of age when we were now seeing profits not even at the ebitda level at the net level as well i mean zomato being a case in point but i just want to understand your thought process around these uh, some of these businesses now uh, because for instance what this quarter has taught us is that a company like zomato while profitability is improving business metrics are improving there's an outstanding issue with respect to esop costs and the market has an you know has a problem with that it's very evident so how are you evaluating uh, the new age or not so new age businesses now uh, which are largely uh, technology uh, led technology turbocharged i mean there is no doubt that these platform plays are uh, you know uh, you know is a different segment one has to look at that at the same time you have to know uh, you know in my opinion how does one look at the valuation and as you rightly said that while they have turned around and they have become a bit of profitable but then in the profitability also there are different pockets to take for for example like employee cost right or esop cost so i would say that so far we haven't you know kind of invested into anything uh, you know of of new age we have been kind of still circumspect of all and i don't know at this market cap of 2 lakh crore approximately where zomato will make money and how does it look at valuation so we, we the way we think is that you should invest into money, uh, companies where you understand the business model you understand the dynamics of the business and you know how you will make money we we do not you know uh, believe in doing you know a little bit of pie in the sky hope trades and somehow most of these companies to me appear that way and i'm not saying that they are not good companies i'm not saying that you know i just feel that we we have no ability to assess the risk reward of these players what are the risk ondc offers to these players we have no idea so hence when we invest from 5 10 years perspective you know you might do a trade but when you look at 5 10 years perspective you got to be worried about many of these things and currently i can tell you we we don't have any Vikas, thank you very much uh, for uh, joining in. Um, have a great uh, afternoon and evening. For those who missed out on the news, Zomato's ESOP cost doubled in the current quarter to 161 crore. And not just that, the company is also asking for a shareholder approval for further ESOP grant of 18.2 crore shares, which at current market value is close to about 3,500 crore rupees. So that's weighing on Zomato today. The stock is down 4.5%. But getting you a CNBC TV18 exclusive now, we learn from sources that Mankind Pharma is looking to acquire Bharat Serum and vaccines. Rachna is here with the details. Rachna. That's right. Sources with direct knowledge of the matter have told CNBC TV18 that Mankind Pharma is considering acquisition of Bharat Serum and vaccines from private equity firm Advent International. Now, Advent International owns 100% stake in Bharat Serum and vaccines and is now looking to sell after almost five years of acquiring it. It was in 2019 when Advent International first acquired a controlling stake of 74% for about $500 million in the company by giving exits to private equity players like Med Asia and Kodak Private Equity. It first the acquired promoter family stake in 2020 for an undisclosed amount and is now looking to sell for a valuation of about 2 billion dollars and it's not just mankind pharma that is considering this purchase it is also swedish private equity eqt partners now we wrote to mankind pharma but it did but we did not receive a response from them yet all right got that uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for that story mankind pharma still holding on to gains about three three and a half percent on the upside uh, sorry yeah. Mankind reports numbers uh, tomorrow, so we'll have probably get a chance to ask them about this. Absolutely. Whether they are in the uh, fray to acquire this company. But I think we'll take a quick commercial break here. We'll come back. We'll get you a quick check on what's happening in dealing rooms and uh, short-term trading ideas as well. We're up 115, 116 points. So about 40 points off the day's highest level. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Well, it's green on the screen. All the frontline indices is holding well in the green. And the good news today is the advanced decline ratio is still in favor of the number of stocks advancing. Three stocks advancing for every one stock that's declining. So your portfolios will be feeling good. Nimesh is with us at 3 p.m. Nimesh, what are you picking up on uh, in terms of DC Chatter? We're in a sharp recovery for the second yeah. day running, right? So that's a good part. And as you rightly pointed out, today a lot of broader market stocks are doing well. So the, at portfolio level, uh, there is a bit of, you know, uh, Feel good factor, so to speak, for yeah. a lot of investors as well. But I guess, uh, you know, we've been saying this for a while now that 21800 uh, is a very crucial support to watch out for. And I guess the way the markets have bounced back from those levels looks like, at least for the time being, that will be a very strong support on the Nifty on the downside. So, with that, with that support, maybe you, can, you know, markets can see that momentum to continue. I guess from a Nifty perspective, maybe, you know, after this uh, two days of up move, uh, it may just spill over to the broader market stocks now. And what I'm saying is because even from a pro flow perspective, I understand there are, there are limit buyers in a lot of mid-cap names today. And probably that explains that mid-cap index is up nearly 1% mm. In terms of sectors, uh, you know, uh, metals is the biggest outperformer out today. The index is up 2 percent But I guess apart from <coughs> metals, even select PSUs have seen a bit of a bounce back after the recent sell-off. So I guess it's also to do with the, the kind of numbers which have been, which have been talked about yeah. as far as the election uh, you know, data is concerned. So that's... That's going to add to the volatility is what I understand. But broadly from a flow perspective, at least it uh, seems like the, the buying interest is back in select the PSU names as well as in the broader market stocks. Well, indeed, it's a bit of a feel-good factor as yeah. well today. You know, there is belief out there that we're going to have continuity. So hopefully the market gets its verdict in its favor. But what about individual stocks? What are you picking up? Well, so in terms of individual names, the first stock in my list is Timken. A big move in that stock. The stock is up 600%. There's a large block in today's trade. I understand it was a clean-out trade from a domestic mutual fund, that, that fund has sold out. So maybe that explains a bit of uh, move in that stock in today's name. The second stock is India Bull Real Estate. For the second day running, uh, there is delivery-based selling happening in that stock. In fact, the stock has relatively underperformed. This month, the stock is down 900%. And while the you know, preferential uh, you know, money is still to be, uh, still to be paid, uh, some bit of selling has led to a bit of underperformance in India Bull Real Estate of late. The third stock is Federal Bank. Again, the stock has been consolidating of late. Post numbers, you've seen a bit of a sideways move. But now I understand uh, the selling pressure from a leading domestic mutual fund is largely over. So maybe, you know, now from here on, we'll see some bit of outperformance in that stock as well. And the last stock is Tata Steel. Well, the entire metal stock has done well. Indeed, Tata Steel as well is up 100%. But I understand there are very strong sell flows at a leading FI desk in Tata Steel in today's market. So expect high delivery volumes in Tata Steel today. All right, uh, Nimesh, uh, thanks very much uh, for that interesting list of stocks as always. And uh, sort of we'll track that uh, as we go along. Uh, Mitesh is with us with, uh, to tell you what to buy or sell today for a reverse trade. Mitesh, uh, still got 100 points, but we're, uh, on, the market was higher, uh, higher, higher still. What are the trades now? Sorry, and I think we didn't get back to you for your trades for 2.30. Uh, go on, Mitesh. <laughs> So I think overall reality is uh, closing on near the day side. I think uh, good sideways consolidation could break on the upside. So we'll take a BTST here. Uh, keep a stop below 1500 and look for a target of 1540-45. But I suspect we can eventually look at higher levels in case the market doesn't start trading below uh, 2200 tomorrow early in the morning. And the other one which I like is uh, RBL Bank, which I would suggest a BTST with a stop below 247 for targets of 254. Okay, thank you very much for that. Now let's go on and talk about Devyani International. That's the owner of brands KFC and Pizza Hut. They reported the Q4 number, numbers. Manglam joins in. Manglam. Well, if you look at the intraday chart of Devyani, you know, immediately as the numbers hit the screen, the stock saw a big decline that after seen a bit of a recovery and is stable ever since. So you have to look at the numbers in a lot more detail than just what's been reported. So revenue for Devani increased by about 38%, 1,047 crores on the top line. The EBITDA increased by about 14.5%. There was some compression in the margins. At the same time, the profit, in fact, the company reported a 61 crore profit same time last year, and now that's turned into a loss. Why is it that the revenues grew 39%? Well, because the company had acquired KFC Thailand, the operations of that in partnership with Tamasek, and as a result of which, the revenues were expected to rise by around 35 to 40% for that acquired entity and that's aided in their numbers. Why are the EBITDA and the net profit or EBITDA margins and the net profit lower? Well, because there was an exceptional expense of 42 and a half crores on account of the Nigerian currency devaluation. Secondly, the employee expenses have increased, one, because of the consolidation of KFC Thailand and secondly, ESOPs of around 1.787 lakh shares have gotten exercised as well. And thirdly, because uh, they acquired, uh, you know, uh, KFC Thailand and added new stores as well, 
depreciation has increased from 78 crore to 125 crores. Depreciation, of course, is a non-cash expense. But the India internals don't, uh, you know, uh, give you a lot of hope because KFC India saw an SSSG decline of 7%. Pizza Hut India also saw a decline of 14% on a same-store sales growth basis. Costa India and Van Gogh are the only two properties that are doing well for them, of course, on a very small base. And these are uh, places which the company is seeding growth as well. Costa India, of course, they've added 25 stores. Van Gogh, which serves South Indian food, has seen a store addition of almost nine. We've seen six KFC India store additions and Pizza Hut India at around two itself. Uh, these numbers, not particularly uh, enthusing, but the fact is that the stock has corrected from the top given the weakness that we've seen in the QSR space and as a result of which, no big change is what we're seeing in the stock price. But we need to see some improvement in sentiment when it comes to QSR. Thank you very much uh, for that. We will slip into a very short break on that note. We'll come back and we'll invite Jay Bala of CashTheChaos.com. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, the markets uh, continue to hold well in the grain. The Nifty Bank, you know, that's seeing a bit of an uptick. I think maybe we'll just pull up the Nifty Financial Services Index because that's the one that's been moving up and moving up, uh, uh, you know, in the last few minutes. So just keep an eye out on the Nifty Financial Services Index. Jay Bala joins us to help us out with some analysis. Hi, Jay. Good afternoon and good to see you in. Well, uh, it's a stock-specific market, so I'd like to know your stocks first that you're tracking for today. Yeah, I have uh, two longs actually, Nigel. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, railway stock, Alcon. Um, I have a stop loss of about 213 for a price objective of fresh record highs close to 290. And the second is a, a, a short term, very short term trade on Wipro. Uh, stop loss of uh, 230, uh, 436 for a short term price objective of 475. <laughs> Hi, Jay. Good afternoon. Great to have you on, uh, you know, on the show today as always. So we were just discussing this a while back that the PSU rally has come back with a vengeance, right? I mean, just a couple of days of lull and now they're all roaring, especially today. I mean, railway shipyards across the board move. Uh, what, what do you make of this? And uh, would you look at any long trades on any PSU stocks now? Yeah, I think it's more limited to the um, railway names rather than uh, a broad spectrum of PSUs. Uh, some of the PSUs, uh, like the Bank, Bank, Bank of Barada, have been negative uh, since last week. So, a little bit of caution is required. This is probably completing the structure that's pending for railway names like Railtel, Irkon. Um, they need to go above the 2024 high that, that was clocked in early January. So, it's just um, possibly selective pockets within the PSU names that's uh, trying to push to fresh 52 week highs. So, I wouldn't get too uh, upbeat on the, on the PSU names. Mm. Uh, Jay, uh, what about l and and Reliance Industries? Uh, these are the two pillars on which the market is rallying today. You got a sharp idea, you know, basically I was trying to, uh, you know, I was going to raise a point on military infrastructure names. Um, l and in particular has probably has had a significant reversal and probably clocked an important top uh, from the 2020 bottom. But we are, it's just still, it just remains to be seen. We'll watch the resistance at about 3,500 for uh, LNT, and if we get a, if we get a strong rejection from there, then it confirms uh, that uh, it's clocked a, a significant medium-term top. When it comes to Reliance, uh, it's it's a very interesting juncture for the bulls. The recent low about 2770 that needs to hold. Uh, if it can hold, I think it has the potential to clock one last high. But for the first time, it's clocked lower lows and lower highs. So it's an important uh, important juncture. But these two names are housed in the Nifty infrastructure. The Nifty infrastructure index uh, is uh, looking like it's starting to turn. But we need to see a close below 8,000 level on the Nifty infra. Only then it will confirm the, the whole infra play is turning. That has, Because most of these names are economy facing for India. So a close below 8,000 is going to have a significant bearing for the medium term for most of the names. Uh, and it's, uh, since I said earlier, these are all economy-facing names. It has an impact on the overall market structure. Mm. Uh, Jay, sorry, I missed it. But if you did, you d discuss metals uh, yet? Oh no, not yet, not yet. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. Vedanta, Nalco, yeah. and uh, everything there in that space today. JSPL, some of the some of this, of course, is results reaction. Vedanta is also there's a board beat coming up for fundraise. I mean, so there are sto individual stories, but I'm not sure if there is a sectoral tailwind. Any thoughts here? 
no, actually, there is a uh, sectoral tailwind. You know, from about 7,500 on the Nifty Metals Index, uh, it, the uh, Nifty Metals Index needs to complete a structure at about 9,600, 9,800. So this is probably at the fag end of the move. So um, and and if you look at um, Comex Copper, uh, I, I believe it's got a couple of uh, higher days of higher highs to yeah. clock, and and it looks like it, it, it might run into an exhaustion there. So we're watching um, uh, you know significant uh, resistance in, in in both these um, in the metals index as well as Comex Copper. Uh, but I've mentioned the resistance levels here. The momentum is clearly on a drag, and you know so it, it's clearly signaling that metal names are on a stretch. And that uh, could very soon exhaust, but no preempting the markets. We'll be watching for what the price action tells around these resistance levels. Mm, okay, got it. By the way, I mean, there's a bit of an Adani group move that has built up in the last two trading sessions, and all of the stocks are up today. Adani Enterprises, of course, are five and a half percent higher. Ports is up about two percent. Adani Power is up about five percent. Uh, Adani Energy Solutions, three and a half. The, the, the entire lot, Total Gas, is up about five, five and a half percent. Now, so far in the last two trading sessions, the best move is on Adani Enterprises, closely followed by Ports. So that's what's playing out. Uh, Jay, you notice anything interesting on the charts here? Any, even a short-term trade? Any, anything that you would take? Yeah, actually, you know, um, besides the two picks, I, I was actually uh, tossing in my mind whether to pick Adani Ports as a pick. So I, uh, I know uh, because the risk reward from here is about a little over one is to one. So in a, a 12 40 stop and for a 15 1460 objective 1480 objective that didn't look so great but you know and it's a big name and some people perceive this as uh, you know politically close to the present government so that's the reason why i awarded it uh, but yeah it is looking very short term interesting for the high risk taker uh, yeah there is uh, but it looks to me that you know the move from the december uh, sorry rather february low uh, of this year is looking like an ending move for adani ports so that's another reason why I you know, just put it as a third on my list rather than uh, top two. Okay, you know, one stock you should keep on your radar today is Bharti Airtel. Numbers are expected closer to about 345, so soon after markets close. And today, all the telecom stocks are higher. Vodafone Idea is up 5.5%. Indus Stars has gained close to about 3.5%. But Bharti Airtel is trading absolutely flat, so not participating in the broader uh, telecom rally that we're seeing. That said, the stock is down pretty well. Year to date, it's up 25%. In the last one year, it's gained close to about 62% and it's very close to its all-time high levels. Uh, the driver behind the telecom rally is the expectation that we will see tariff increases once the election is over. The last tariff increase was in two and a half years back and now the Vodafone idea is capitalized and if it has to be a long-term competitive player, we will need to see some tariff hikes. On to the numbers. Well, the fear is this time that Bharti's consolidated numbers will be lower than what the street is expecting. The key reason for that is Airtel Africa reported numbers last week and Airtel Africa accounts for about 25% of the overall PNL. And Airtel Africa's numbers were lower than street expectations. Revenues fell, you know, uh, the EBITDA fell, and that's because of the devaluation of the Nigerian currency. So the Airtel Africa performance could weigh on the consensus numbers, and therefore it could be lower than what you know the poll throws up. But the street might focus on the India business, and the India business is likely to report a steady quarter, like we've seen in the case of Reliance Geo. Uh, the two metrics to track: one is the ARPU, average revenue per user. Now, for Bharti Airtel, despite no price increase, the ARPU has been steadily inching up, and that's because of premiumization, basically converting the 2G subscribers into 4G or the existing 4G subscribers into higher value plan. And the second metric to track will be subscriber growth. How many subscribers do they add on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis? And here the number is seen closer to $4 million, maybe between 3 to $4 million. So that's Bharti's you know, expectation. As I said, number should be out in the next uh, 15 minutes. So. Uh, Jay, um, what about Vodafone idea? Um, you know, have we seen a base built into the stock closer to the price at which the companies raise money? And Indus Stars, that's been on a tear in party Airtel. We've not spoken about telecom often, uh, but where do you stand on these stocks? Yeah, uh, for me, Vodafone idea is an avoid. You know, um, I, I, I mean, I've been bullish on Bharti since uh, uh, I know it's, it's a sub thousand and it, it's performing quite well. And I, I, I expected it to exhaust around 1360 uh, odd levels, but it's still, uh, you know, it uh, seems uh, the momentum is still intact. Probably one more high, high due. But I would have an idea as long as it stays below uh, below 14 and a half and 14, it's a complete avoid. 
there could be ups, uh, short term upsides, but you know, I don't like the price structure. Uh, it's you know, that's so why I'm, I'm avoiding the stock. This is the article today, Rima, in the morning that. Uh, you get ready for to pay 25 percent higher that yeah. uh, story. I think it was the Times of India, but uh, you know the <clears throat> as after, I mean the stocks actually corrected, come off quite sharply, 10 percent or so, along with the market uh, fall, and it's recovering some of it uh, with the gain uh, uh, today. Uh, I think uh, we're going to wrap up things here. Jay, great speaking with you as always. Appreciate your time and uh, talk to you soon again. We lend 115 points higher, 22 to uh, 218. The high today was 22 to 70. So exactly 50 points off the day's highest level. Uh, guess what? The 40-day uh, sort of uh, le level that we would have been discussing from the morning is 22 to 72. So we almost got to it, and then we saw about, about a 50-odd point kind of a reversal. But still, uh, it's a good close. Nifty Bank did a little less, but uh, ended higher. Uh, 47,862 on the Nifty Bank. Very big PSU day. Long list of gainers there, and metals as the sort of standout performer, sectorally speaking. Prima. Well, uh, you know, talking about the individual movers in the frontline pack, Adani Enterprises, the top gainer, Autos did well, M&M, Hero Motor Corp, l and Reliance Industries were the star performers in the large cap heavyweights. On the way down, consumption names, so Tata Consumer, Nestle, Subdued, Axis Bank, ICSA Bank on the back foot, and Sipla gave up yesterday's gains. Well, it was PSU, PSU and PSU all the way. Uh, on the Nifty and beyond the Nifty as well, look at some of the moves. I mean, Mazgao Dock, 10% higher. Then you've got a lot of, uh, then there's coaching shipyard, I must mention here, is but about 12% higher. Look at names like, uh, you know, NBCC, 5%. Then the entire railway rally was scorching. Aircon, about uh, 8%. RVNL, Railtel. I mean, these are stocks pushing almost 10% gains intraday today. Uh, big moves really coming in there. The Adani rally, we were discussing it just a while back. So Adani Power, Adani Total Gas, uh, gains here are in excess of 5% on many of these stocks. Uh, and then, of course, even beyond, I mean, it was just PSUs all the way, Hoodco, uh, quite a few other names as well, which really stood out. So, strong, solid day coming in. Uh, beyond PSUs, Godfrey Phillips deserves a mention, 9% move, uh, pretty strong one at that. And in terms of uh, news-based movers and, and shakers, Ethos on good numbers, 5.5% on the upside. So, that's how the day has played out. Strong day and a good session for the market overall, specifically for mid-caps. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Closing Bell. Many thanks for, for uh, watching, but don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Our uh, special offering, Markets Forward, comes up next.